everyone, great to connect with you again today. Sunday morning, we'll read for our regular times of worship at 8.30 and 11. I'll be preaching about the struggle of wealth from Psalm 49. At 9.45, Kids Connect, you Sunday school and adult discipleship will meet. I want to remind you that this Saturday morning is our annual church work day. A lot of time will be spent sprucing up the grounds. We welcome children and families and we'll have cinnamon rolls and coffee. Our global engagement emphasis a couple of weeks ago focused on Bible translation. In the Sunday morning worship service, Joel Trudell made the comment that the point of scripture translation isn't to have a book that people can read in their heart language, as important as that is. The point of having the scripture that people can read in their heart language is so that it leads to life transformation. His comments reminded me of a story I heard when I was a young boy. It's the story of a man named Monty who lived in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. For a while, Monty was, I don't know, basically an agnostic. When his wife became a Christian, he forbade her pastor from even coming into their home. As the years progressed, he sort of moved into just sort of a general sense of apathy toward God. He was an outdoorsman, loved hunting and fishing, he raised bees. In fact, at one point, he was the state bee inspector for the whole state of Michigan. He, had some, he and some friends had a hunting cabin in the northern peninsula of Michigan. When he was in his late 60s, early 70s, they went up to the cabin as they had so often done. And one night, for some reason, while the other guys were out, Monty stayed back in the cabin. There by himself, he stumbled upon a Gideon Bible. No one could have been more surprised than he himself that he actually picked up that Bible and began to read it. And as he read, he sensed God speaking to him. And in response, he opened his heart to Jesus. When he got home and told his family, those who were Christians were so excited, but no one more than his little granddaughter, Linda. She attended the local Free Methodist Church, and she'd been begging him to go with her, but he'd refused. But now he went. And Monty and the young pastor of that church connected. As you might well imagine, money was scarce for this pastoral family with three little boys in this little resort town church. And Monty, who had been tight with money, as he had quite a bit of it, began taking those three boys shopping. He bought them new clothes and other things, and in fact, he began to loosen his purse strings with everyone. His family was astounded at the difference. And when he died some 25 years later, many people spoke about his loving generous spirit. Now that story may sound like a fairy tale, but I know it's true because the man who prayed in that cabin was Monty Dingman, my great-grandfather, a man I had the privilege of knowing for the first 16 years of my life. It's one of the favorite stories of our families, you might well imagine, and because of it, we are all eternally grateful for the power of God's word not just to teach us, as important as that is, but to transform our lives and to make us new through the power of the Holy Spirit. You never know how God's going to use his word to bring people to himself. But we do know that his word is more powerful and more effective than any of us can imagine in our lives and the lives of people all over the world. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for the power of your word and for the way your word speaks into our lives and the lives of all who read it. Give us a greater passion for your word and give us a greater willingness to be a part of making your word available in heart languages. May your divine blessing and grace be poured out on all who are giving their lives to this kind of work. And may more fruit come than any of us could have ever imagined. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.